We continue reading from Chaitanya Charitamrita, Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya, Jaya Nityananda, Jaya Advaita Chandra, Jaya Gaura Bhatta Vrinda, Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya, Jaya Nityananda, Jaya Advaita Chandra, Jaya Gaura Bhatta Vrinda, Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya, Jaya Nityananda, Jaya Advaita Chandra, Jaya Gaura Bhatta Vrinda. We're reading from Adi Lila, Chapter 4, Text 107. Shesha Lilaya Prabhura Krishna Viraha Unmad Brahma Maya Chesta Ara Pralapa Maya Vad. In the final portion of his pastimes, Lord Chaitanya was obsessed with the madness of separation from Lord Krishna. He acted in erroneous ways and talked deliriously. So, this is in the Antya Lila. The uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes are divided into three. The Adi Lila, which is the beginning, that's what we are on. Then is the Madhya Lila, which is the middle portion. And then Antya Lila is the final pastimes of the Lord. So Lord Sri Chaitanya exhibited the highest stage of the feelings of a dev devotee in separation from the Lord. So Lord Chaitanya showed us, how does a devotee feel? What does the devotee go through when he's separated from the Lord? This exhibition was sublime because he was completely perfect in the feelings of separation. Materialists, however, cannot understand this. Sometimes materialistic scholars think he was diseased or crazy. The problem is that they always engage in material sense gratification and can never understand the feelings of the devotees of the Lord. Materialists are most abominable in their ideas. They think that they can enjoy directly perceivable gross objects by their senses and that they can similarly deal with the transcendental features of Lord Chaitanya. So we cannot try to understand the spiritual with our material mind. Now, uh, Lord Chaitanya, he was almost he, like it's read, obsessed with madness of separation. He was going crazy. So if we look at it from a material point of view, we'll say, oh, no, he's, he's, you know, he's a crazy man. You know, leave him alone. But that's not the truth. He's actually on the highest platform of love, love for Krishna. So we cannot use our material understanding to understand spiritual matters. Separation in the material world causes suffering, which is a source of great distress, great anxiety to us. We don't want to feel those things. But because the material world is a perverted reflection, whatever seems so bad here is very high there in the spiritual world. It's the highest over there. Whatever's the lowest here, the highest is in the spiritual world. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is feeling the highest ecstasy in this. Uh, separation. But if on our material platform, when we are separated, we feel so much distress. So we cannot um, use our material understanding to understand the spiritual. Uh, but the Lord is understood only in pursuance of the principles laid down by the Goswamis, headed by Swarup Damodar, doctrines like those of the Nadia Nagaris, a class of so-called devotees are never presented by authorized persons like Swarup Damodar or the six Goswamis. The ideas of the Gaura Nagaris, Gauranga Nagaris are simply a mental concoction and they're completely on a mental platform. So there is, seems there's a group of people called Nadia Nagaris or they are called Gauranga Nagaris, but they are not on the platform of devotional service. They are still on the mental platform. They are still coming from a place of the material mind, but not following the scriptures, not following the sadhu, guru, shastra, not following the six Goswamis. Yeah, because uh, uh, author, authorized persons, not following authority basically, but just making up whatever they want to make up about Lord Chaitanya and behaving in uh, random ways, not authorized by the scripture. So we always have to go sadhu, guru, and shastra. So reading on Radhikara bhave yache uddhava darshane se bhave mata prabhu rahe ratri dine. Just as Radhika went mad at the sight of Uddha, 
So Lord Chaitanya was obsessed day and night with the madness of separation. Those under the shelter of the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu can understand that his mode of worship of the Supreme Lord Krishna in separation is the real worship of the Lord. When the feelings of separation become very intense, one attains the stage of meeting Sri Krishna. So here, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is showing us how can we meet Krishna? Lord Krishna, he's the Supreme Lord, but he's showing us how we can meet him. You know, I try and just imagine if we could meet any great personality face to face a private meeting with them, you know, a great president or a great someone, hero we are following, you know, or even a demigod that we are following. If we could meet them. Here, Lord Chaitanya is showing us how we can meet the Supreme Lord face to face. And what is that? Mode of separation. Then the feelings of separation become very intense. One attains the desire of meeting Sri Krishna. So again, it goes to show that Krishna is Bhakta Vatsal. Whatever is our desire, he fulfills that desire. When we have that intense, intense desire that Krishna, I need to be with you. I can't be separate from you. Uh, we have that feelings, Krishna, I'm missing you so much. You know, this is like prema bhakti. When in love, in love for Krishna, when a person is going mad in that separation, then Krishna reveals himself. You can meet Krishna. So devotees, so-called devotees like the Sahajas, cheaply imagine they are meeting Krishna and Vrindavan. Such thinking may be useful, but actually meeting Krishna is possible through the attitude of separation taught by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So now we have a choice. Do we want to pretend we are meeting Krishna or do we want to actually meet him? Because they're two very different things. Do we think we are meeting Krishna? Because if we think, then it's still on the mental platform. It's just our mind and our imagination, and it is nothing to do with the fact. So because the Sahijas, a group of people, they pretend or they think, they imagine they are meeting Krishna in Vrindavan, but that's called very cheap, and that's not the truth. And the way to really meet Krishna, Lord Chaitanya says, is to develop this attitude of separation so how can we how can we develop revive this separation how can we develop it through hearing and chanting the more we hear and the more we chant the more we understand that how wonderful krishna is Srila rupa goswami in nectar in uh, bhakti rasamrit sindhu uh, points out a few of qualities of krishna krishna has unlimited qualities but he points out 64 qualities. And these qualities are an impetus for a devotee to, to kindle that love in the devotee, to revive that love in the devotee for Krishna. It's an impetus to love Krishna. So this mood of separation, viraha, viraha it's called, viraha. The bhav, the uh, bhav is called viraha. Ratri pralapakare swarupera kantadari aveshe apana bhava kahaye ughadi. At night, he talked incoherently in grief with his arms around Swarup Damodar's neck. He spoke out his heart in ecstatic inspiration. So, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is showing us in his final pastimes, Antya Leela. He was just, just so much in separation with Krishna. He's Krishna himself, but because he's in the mood of Srimati Radharani, he is showing us how we can also approach Krishna. He's in the mood of a devotee. So he's showing us what our mood should be. We should not cheaply pretend, yes, yes, I already met Krishna now. Last night I met him, you know. No, but always the six Goswamis are running. Where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? When will I meet Krishna? So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was incoherently talking in grief. He was in, on that stage of Mahabhav. You know, Mahabhav is not possible for any ordinary living entity. It's a bhav of Srimati Radharani. And his emotions, he would speak out, his ecstatic emotions. It's not that he's suffering. He's enjoying this. He's experiencing the highest bliss. He's Krishna himself. Why would he want to suffer? 
He wanted to explain, exp uh, he wanted to experience the bliss a devotee feels in separation from him. He wanted to feel that happiness, that intense emotion. Yabe ye bhava uthe prabhura antara se gite shloke sukha de na damodara. Whenever a particular sentiment arose in his heart, so Damodar satisfied him by singing songs or reciting verses of the same nature. So Swarup Damodar used to intensify, used to help Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to feel more and more these emotions by speaking uh, the suitable verses or suitable pastimes, depending on the mood that he's going through. You know, so we, we want to experience things. Let me try something. Let me try to experience, maybe I will feel some thrill, some adventure. I will do this. I will feel like this. Let me go here. I will feel some adventure there. We're always wanting to experience different things. But just imagine if we would actually be able to experience the love of Krishna that's in each of everyone's heart. How, how many emotions, how many feelings, how, how our experience would be, you know? We are always looking for thrills in our life. That's why we do different things. We, we, we are always like, you know, looking out, maybe this is, hmm, this looks interesting. Let me try it. Maybe I'm going to experience something different, but this is the highest experience to experience love for Krishna, love for God. You know, so we should try to endeavor to experience this. And it's the highest experience that we could have. So then, to analyze these pastimes is not necessary now. Later, I shall describe them in detail. So in detail, they are given in the Antya Leela. Purve Vraje Krishnera Trividavayo Dharma Kaumara Pauganda Ara Keshora Ati Marma. Formerly in Braj, Lord Krishna displayed three ages, namely childhood, boyhood, and adolescence. His adolescence is especially significant. So in Braj, Krishna showed uh, childhood. That was Kaumara, between one to five. Then Pauganda, five to six to 11, 10. Or, yeah, six to 10. Then Kaishorya, uh, adolescence. As his adol and those pastimes are the most, most wonderful, more significant. Vatsalya Aveshe Kaila Komar Safala, Oganda Safala Kaila Lana Sakavala. Parental affection made his childhood fruitful. His boyhood was successful with his friends. So in his Kaumara age, he had he displayed his most loving pastimes with Yashoda Mai, Nanda Baba, you know, most intimate loving pastimes with his parents. Then when he was in the Pauganda age, he was going, taking the calves and the cows taking the cows to, to Govardhan and he would go with his friends and over there they would have amazing games, ball games or, you know, imitating birds or echoes, calling out names and hearing the name being uh, echoes, wrestling. He, would, he used to have these very, very fun pastimes with his uh, friends. That was his uh, Pauganda. And Kamara childhood, we know so many of his killing demons in his childhood. Um, the Putana demon and Trina Bharta. And then Mother Yashoda would go almost mad in her love for Krishna. She would faint. What happened to my Krishna? Or even the Damodar Leela happened when he was a, a small child. So Radhika Dilana Kaila Rasadi Vilas Manchabari Asa. Ashvadila Rasera Niryas. In youth, he tasted the essence of Ras, fulfilling his desires in pastimes like the Rasa dance with Srimati Radhika and the other gopis. So in his, uh, in his um, later pastimes, <coughs> Nava Yovan, when he's like an adolescent youth, he's having his most wonderful pastimes with Srimati Radharani and the gopis. In his youth, Lord Krishna made all three of his ages and the entire universe successful by his pastimes of amorous love like the Rasa dance. So in the Madhurya Ras, in his, in his pastimes 
with the gopis, all the rasas are there, incomplete. All the rasas are there. The, the feeling of taking care of Krishna, the feeling of friendship with Krishna, and then it's coupled with this conjugal love for Krishna. So it is the highest, highest um, ras. And of course, in Golok Vrindavan, the Madhurya ras is the most prominent, the sweetness, even in Vatsalya, even in Dasya, even in Sakya, as a parent, as a friend, as a, um, a servant, or even as neutral, the Madhurya is the most prominent because all the relationships in Golok Vrindavan are just so sweet, sweet with love for Krishna. That sweetness is very, very prominent. And so the entire universe could see this Rasa dance pastimes. So apikesho rakavayo mana yan madusu danaha remis stri ratna kutasta shapasu shapita hitaha. Lord Madhusudan enjoyed his youth with pastimes on autumn nights in the midst of the jewel like milkmaids. Thus he dispelled all the misfortunes of the world. This is a verse from Vishnu Puran 513.60. So he's been called Lord Madhusudan. So Madhusudan enjoyed his youth pastimes uh, in the autumn nights with all the gopis. So Vishnu Puran also has this. And thus he dispelled all the misfortunes of the world. So the entire world became fortunate. The entire world became glorious by hearing these pastimes. So Vacha Suchita Sharvari Ratika Kala Pragal Vayaya Radikam Vida Kunchita Lochanam Virachayan Agre Sakhinam Asa Tad Vaksho Ruha Chitra Keli Makari Panditya Param Gataha Keshoram Safali Karoti Kalayan Kunje Viharanam Harihi Lord Sri Krishna made Srimati Radharani close her eyes in shame before her friends by his words relating the amorous activities on the previous night. Then he showed the highest limit of cleverness in drawing pictures of dolphins in various playful sports on her breasts. In this way, Lord Hari made his youth successful by performing pastimes in the bushes with Sri Radha and her friends. This is a verse from the Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu 2.1.231 of Srila Rupa Goswami. Now to a mundane person, it will say, oh my God, what are these, these people? They are saying they are devotees, they are liberated persons. What are they speaking about? But we have to understand that these are the most highest pastimes. This is the most sweetest pastimes. It's not coming from a place of lust. If we approach it with our lust, which is in our heart, we won't be able to understand this. These pastimes are full of love and no, no lust in them. So Krishna was there with Radharani and with the gopis. And then he was telling her, oh, we had so such nice fun at, in the night. And she was getting more and more shy. Oh, you're telling my friends what we were doing. And then he's like he being like more like a joking. He's sure being very clever. He's drawing dolphin pictures on her breasts. Like, you know, and she's feeling more and more shy. So this is all transcendental loving pastimes. This is the highest pastimes. This is the highest pastimes. Okay, now time is uh, a little short. So we'll stop here for today. Um, we'll stop here for today. And um, I would just like to mention a, a bit uh, about what we were saying uh, in Bhagavatam class. We were speaking about adoption or about, um, what's that? I IVF, in virtue of fertilization. And, but what Bhagavatam points out is that, that means the desires to be a parent, right? And Bhagavatam says that the duty of a parent is to educate the child to make this, this life the last life for the child. You know, that they don't take a birth again in this material world. So I, according to me, that should be the point that if whatever it is, we are adopting, we are getting a child through whatever ways, but the, 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 that our responsibility as parents is to teach the child 
who they truly are, about teach the child about Krishna consciousness. And uh, of course, the choice is theirs then. Once they're big, whether they take it up, they don't take it up, that choice is there. But the duty of the parent is to, is to train the children in Krishna consciousness, at least when they are uh, in younger, at least when they're younger, to inform them the truth. And you're not the body or the soul, you're just here. You have to go back to Krishna. I think that is a more, uh, because that's what Bhagavatam says, that that's the duty of a parent. You know, is that okay? Yeah, so then we'll stop here today for Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Sri Chaitanya Chaitanya Charitamrita, Kiche, Shla Prabhupada, Kiche, Gaur Premanye, Hari Bol, Hare Krishna.